you are trying to study Arabic, but you are confused because people told you there is a classic Arabic, there is dialect, each country has different dialect. What's useful for you? You don't know where to study. University, institute, private teacher, YouTube, Dolingo, there is many places. Or you try to study Arabic and you notice that Arabic has difficult grammar or difficult pronunciation and you are frustrated. Here in this video, I will talk about this point. Hello everyone, here's Alibaba, the Arabic teacher. I will talk in this video about who I am, what I do, and I will explain about my method, and I will explain the difference between classic Arabic and dialect, and what's useful for you to study. I will talk about also what I use usually as material and what I focus on in my classes and how I make people speak Arabic. And in the end, I will talk about how you can apply to these classes or other classes. I teach since five years full time. I am based in Lebanon, but I'm from Syria. I consider Lebanon my second country. I teach both classic Arabic and dialect, dialect from Syria and Lebanon. I work online, I work offline. I work individually and I teach group sometimes. I teach adults, not kids. I work with a few NGOs or individually with just people working or students here. I studied law and for the moment I'm studying theater and directing and photography. So the method, there is two, classic or dialect. The classic will follow a book from any school that teach classic Arabic because it's kind of the same, all the school follow same method, kind of international. Also it's same as other language method, the simple way, normal way of learning language. We will include some videos, some tags, some social media stuff, some news, but it's simple. Everyone know this method or if you don't know this method, it's same as your language or any language you learn. Dialect. In dialect, you need to learn the alphabet. Some teachers, they don't teach you the alphabet because they can use the Latin alphabet. But in my classes, I prefer to teach the alphabet. Especially it takes between 6 to 10 hours. 6 to 10 hours, you will learn how to write and read. Maybe slow. But we will practice that through the greeting expression that we will learn that you need in dialect or depends on which dialect. And then we move to a possessive, like my house, your house, his house. And also the idafa, we call it idafa. I couldn't find real translation for this word. Idafa, yani when we say the house of the ambassador or the car of Ali, or which is Ali's car. And I will explain the difference between the, if we try to translate, the difference between Arabic, English, or your mother tongue. After that, we will learn the three, let's call them irregular verb. I want, I have, I can. I want, I have, I can, they are very simple verbs and uh, during this uh, learning of these verbs, we will learn any vocabulary that we need to say. Like in the restaurant, you say, I want, and we will learn the food. And I don't have, we learn like time, idea, I don't have money, I don't have, uh, I have exam, I have COVID. All this vocabulary, we will bring them uh, during the classes and we will learn them. After we will learn the preposition because it's the most important thing after the I have, I can, I want the preposition from, to, on, at, in, by, all that, with, without, all this and the vocabulary around and the expression. Maybe there is expression in Arabic. We will learn them as well that I don't have time. I have no idea. We will learn all that expression. After this, we will learn the questions. Question is very important in the beginning to learn them, to understand people and to ask, and also any vocabulary. How old are you? How many days that you have been here? How long you have been here? Since when? How much is this? How many brothers do you have? How many class do you have tomorrow? How many hours? How many? All these questions and the vocabulary around. After that, we'll learn this and that. Ismail Ishara, which we call this, that, uh, and this for feminine, this for masculine. Also, we we'll learn, always we we'll learn expression. When we learn word or preposition, we we'll learn any expression around this uh, preposition or question. Like, for example, when we say like last week, we say al isbu al-madi. In classic Arabic, al-isbu al-madi. And in Dalek, we say al-isbu al-madi. 
Okay, we say last week, but in Arabic sometimes we say that week. Haydek al So we learn all of this expression. After that, I see the person, how they learn, and I see if I should give them the numbers or I just go to conjugation directly and the numbers will be later. Conjugation, it's the main thing in Arabic. We will learn the conjugation from the small number of the letter of the verbs, like the verb two letter, and then three letter, and then four, five, six. We can do that in a classic, in different way, like they follow taf'ila, fa'ala, 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 tafa'ala. But in dialect, we just learn the number. I, I know you're lost with tafa'ala and fa'ala, but no worries, I'm just explaining like that. How can we explain the conjugation Arabic? depends on the number of the infinitive of the verb I mean the number of the letter so for example like katab, katab to write, katab, katab like three letter, three letter, any other verb three letter will conjugate the same and we'll learn that every group of verb I leave some space between them to learn some expression, some like colors or like expression when we say like unless, uh, when I do that, the expression when uh, and like you heard word in Arabic, for example, bas, you hear it many times, bas has five views and you learn that. And then, for example, there is this verb which is confusing in Arabic. In English, it's like, I think, just one verb, think, but in Arabic has several views. We will explain that and you will see that all this confusion is going to disappear. Because it's, it's not difficult, it's just Arabic easy but it has different grammar in the same word so we need to apply all the grammar without forgetting anything but every grammar by itself it's so simple but when we put them together they, they might people might forget things or like missing some grammar we will practice together and in the end of the conjugation we will start to watch series and the series you have to watch you don't you cannot escape you have to watch it and we will talk about it or we will see news and we will talk. I will ask my student to find someone to do exchange with. And if they don't find, I can maybe provide some people who want to study language in Lebanon or somewhere, study other language and they do exchange. So all that together will make the people speak, inshallah. So how I teach usually? Usually I give to the people uh, homework first. They should do homework, every class they should do homework. But I teach them not just to say like, okay, good night. I don't follow this way like, okay, yalla say good night, ala khair, khalas. No, I will put them in the situation. Like sometimes, like my students usually confuse me. Ali, are you serious? Or is it real question? Or like, no, it's real question. Just answer me. I want to put them in a real situation. Plus the pronunciation. Some people say like, for example, I cannot pronounce the R, I cannot roll, I cannot say Ha, I cannot say A, I don't understand the difference between so and Sa. I explain them through, I draw mouth for them on the board and to tell them what they should do in their tongue. And we'll compare the sound to their mother tongue, what they have in English or French. And we practice until the person pronounces this letter. And there is no way, everyone in my classes, they pronounce all the letters, all the words, all the expression also when they learn word i don't teach like word by word i want to go to school this way i hear sometimes people speak like this and it's so uh, it's right what they say it's right like i understand them but when i tell them the same sentence they don't understand me because they say ali speak very quick no ali or other people they don't speak with they speak normal but because you don't speak like them, you speak like your mother tongue or you speak slow, you think they speak fast. So for that, I teach them how to speak fast. How to speak fast with connecting words together. I tell them the technique, how to connect words together. Maybe the word sounds like this. And if we put it in a sentence, the sound change. For example, men, the word men, the preposition men from. Men, I'm sure like most of the foreigner who study somewhere, they know the word men and they use it as men el mahal men el mahal but no like the sound will change when you put article after and it will be nil n n so the sound of men disappears when i put it in a sentence i explain them this technique then in this way they can speak or at least when someone speaks they understand 
but they pronounce maybe a little bit different shwe, but it's fine as long as they understand. Because Arabic is not I just want to speak or I just want to understand, you need to communicate. Also expression, like many people they use different expression because they heard from people like maybe you hear from friends or people in the street, taxi driver tell you something, the supermarket told you something and they say a different way and different meaning. Why? And you are confused. I explain you this different. I always explain my student. If someone told them something, I tell them, please confirm with me the use because not everyone aware of the use of this expression. And that's how I work usually. We just you have to know that Arabic is different than other, maybe Spanish and French. If we speak something here, we just need to translate it here and then we'll be fine. But Arabic is totally different. Maybe we don't say the structure. We don't say this form. Like, for example, we don't say in Arabic, what do you think? We say, what's your opinion? So I explain also this kind of stuff, the difference between languages or Arabic and other language. And I make the people aware of any different in this language. How you apply usually to my classes, you should text me on my email or my WhatsApp or Facebook or Instagram. I have to ask you a few questions to know like how long you're staying, how, how long you want to study, like how many time per week you want, uh, what language you speak already, some information that I consider, I don't want to tell them maybe, but I see if everything fit, I tell, I explain the people how I work and the prices and other things. And then if everything is okay and if we have time both, if we fit we will start classes. So usually I work with my student who I pick to teach or who doesn't. Like usually I pick everyone as much as they are, for example, slow in a language or uh, they think they are bad in pronunciation. I take literally everyone. But I usually, I don't work with people who like, for example, Sometimes people coming to Lebanon for two weeks and they would just want to learn a few words to say with the supermarket or like this kind of people when they text me, I provide them number of other teachers or the people who study somewhere else and they try to have on the side private teacher like I cannot work on that because I will always have to fix what the others did because the other, for example, in the institute, they follow method and it's not real proper dialect. And usually I avoid this kind of people. I mean, avoid them, giving them another teacher number or tell them like, I cannot do that until they finish. Or usually when people like study in another place, like for example, at university and they want to add like some activities on the side. Uh, okay, I want private Arabic teacher to practice some Arabic. Like usually there's like conflict between method and made the person lost. So this is usually difficult for me to like, I will seem that I am against this method or like I prefer to give them maybe other teachers. There's many teachers in Lebanon, they teach Arabic. Also the people who start to study for long term, but I see like during the class, they are not really following, they're not paying attention, they're like not doing their homework. They cancel a lot classes, although there is deal with the payment for canceling, but still like I prefer to teach people who are serious and who start with me and work a lot on their Arabic. Some people come sometime and they try to, for example, they work in NGO or something. They want some activities on the side. Uh, and usually, yalla, let's do Arabic. Like, mm, no, Arabic is not something on the side, something you should work on. And seriously, when we come to the class, it's really work here, not on the side activities. It's something that we need to work together and the class one hour make you tired in the end because we will work a lot. Some people they think like, okay, I want to deal with Arabic same as other language and I just apply what I know in my language. I just translate and then fine. I just want to ask Ali, what's this word? How do you say this? How do you say this? This doesn't work because you need to follow the method I provide. Otherwise you will speak weird because you are speaking your native language to with Arabic words, which doesn't make sense in Arabic. And I want people to speak Arabic and tell that I did Arabic with this person. In the end, I will talk about the difference between classic Arabic or dialect and which dialect I should study or should I study classic Arabic. I was supposed to talk before, but I left it to the end because it will take maybe a bit long. So what's classic and what's dialect? Classic is the language that was written. You hear it in the news. 
you hear it in the TV in general, like in the, if it's uh, an official program, you, they will speak in a classic Arabic and you read it in the books, anything written in books, newspaper, articles, websites will be in a classic Arabic. So it's not really language we used to speak, we use it to communicate, it's a language for TV or news official stuff. So if it's your field, your work on that, you can learn a classic, but you have to know that you cannot use it with speaking. I mean, you can, the people will understand you, but they always will see it weird that you speak to them in a classic way. So like the, the people usually, the kids say like, oh, why they speak like cartoon? Because in a cartoon movies, they cartoon for kids, they use the classic Arabic. If you want to study dialect, which dialect you should study? Of course, where you go, where you work, you should study this dialect. But if you want something to, okay, I want to, anyone to under, everyone understand me. You definitely should study Lebanese. Lebanese is famous in the media and everyone adapt to this language because this accent, the Lebanese say it's language, but okay. Uh, it's slow and has the closest words to classic Arabic. So it's Syrian and Lebanese will be soft to any other accent to understand you guys when you speak this two accent. But you will be understanding only Syrian, Lebanese, Palestinian a bit, Jordanian a bit. You will definitely be lost for Gulf countries. Iraqi maybe will be, depends how, how strong you know this accent. Then you might understand a bit Iraqi. Moroccan, Algerian, Libya and Mauritania, let's say. You will never understand anything. They will understand you. Egyptian, they definitely will understand you, but mm, you will be confused a bit. Like they speak better than, like, with a melody. Like, you know, they extend the sound more. So you will be like lost sometime and they use different expression. It's different accent. You definitely cannot understand every accent unless you work really, uh, you learn all the accent of these countries. Or at least you learn four accent and you see how the trans transition between accent and kind of you understand what's going on in the other accent. But I have some people I used to teach them and they went to Jordan. They were struggling a bit to understand people, but people were understanding them. But still they could order, they could like uh, communicate with a the taxi, they could uh, understand the simple conversation of this accent. So if you want to apply for these classes and you want some information about the classes, how hard they are, what method, prices and stuff, please you can text me or ask the people who did the classes with me before or now or check their views on Facebook and you will understand how my method is. Plus you can also go to YouTube and Facebook. There is many videos I explain about Arabic grammar, about one word, about numbers, about like there's several videos I made before talking about Arabic language. Thank you very much. I hope this video wasn't long and good luck with your Arabic. Bye.